Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to take a PD patch like the one that we created in the first video or the one that we were working with in the first and second video in this series. Um, expose parameters like center frequency, Q, and gain and be able to manipulate them in a WISE project um, as a plugin like this. Okay, so here we have input parameters like Q, center frequency, and gain, and we can tie them to RTPC states uh, like wind strength so that when we manipulate the parameter wind strength, we can manipulate the center frequency of the filter, the gain of the plugin, and the Q of the filter as well. So let's figure out how we do this and, and how we get these parameters exposed in WISE as a plugin. If you followed along with us in the first two videos, you should have a setup that looks something like this. You should have a simple wind folder which contains your underscore main.pd patch. And you also might have some other folders that were generated from our build. If you do, for example, the C code folders and the WISE folders, go ahead and get rid of those because we're going to be building new ones. Now, let's open up our underscore main.pd patch to see what we're working with. In this patch, we have three noise objects which are outputting noise to two bandpass objects in series. We have three copies of those. And these are all going to a multiplier object, which are decreasing the, the signal flow or the gain to about 10% of the original, and then finally outputting it to the DAC object. For simplicity's sake, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the outer two objects. And I'm going to actually save this patch as something else. Uh, in the same folder, I'm just going to call it underscore main um, O2. On the bandpass filters, we have two number objects which are manipulating the values in the middle and right input. The middle input of the filter manipulates the center frequency of the bandpass filter. The right input manipulates the Q should only be manipulated between the values of 0 and 1. In order to do that, I'm going to hit Control E, and then I'm going to hold down the Shift button and drag the number, and click and drag on the number object. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and turn on, I know it's loud, I'm going to go ahead and turn on the DSP, and then you're going to hear the effects of the manipulation of these two objects. You'll notice that on the middle input, I do not hold shift uh, because I want to actually manipulate this. This is a frequency number, so it's, it's going to go pretty high. Now we want to manipulate the gain control. So what we have to do is hit control three. Uh, actually, let me press control E to get into edit mode. Hit control three and it's going to create a number atom. Then we want to connect this number atom to the right input inlet of the uh, multiplication atom. Okay, now I hit control E and I press, I check on the DSP box. And I'm going to hold down shift for this so I make sure that I'm implementing or manipulating the number object using smaller values. Okay. 
Okay. So now we know that we can manipulate gain, we can manipulate center frequency, and we can manipulate Q. These parameters are known as input parameters. They are receiving input, say, from something like an RTP, CNYs, or directly from us as the user. So all input parameters can be manipulated using R objects. So let's first start by creating a new object by going to put object or as you can see we can use the shortcut control one so we're going to start with the gain value here that we want to manipulate I'm going to hit control one and then I'm going to start typing and uh, like I said our objects control input parameters so I'm going to start by using the letter R and you can see there now that I move the mouse alright so what's next what do we want this to be called uh, in wise as a parameter. So I want this to be called gain because it is the gain parameter. Next we're going to have to add at hv underscore param and then so now we have to add a minimum value and a maximum value. For gain I want to have a minimum value of 0 and a maximum value of 1. And then the next value I want to add is the default value. So when an instance of this plugin is created in WISE, what is the default value assigned to the gain parameter? I want it to be 0.5 so that it's right in the middle. This is the basic structure of how to create an R object in pure data for exposing your parameters to WISE. First the letter R, then the name of the parameter that you want exposed, at hv underscore param, the minimum value, the maximum value, and the default value. So now I click away, and that is created, and then I plug in the outlet to the inlet of the number object, or whatever object that I want to manipulate. All right, so now let's handle our center frequency and our Q parameters. So I'm going to go ahead and hit control one again. R, and then what name for my center frequency? I'll just call it, I'll use uh, camel case here, center frequency, and then again, at hv underscore param. Now for my minimum value, let's just say 60 hertz, that's probably low enough. Uh, not hertz, don't add the hertz in there. And then how high do I want this um, filter to go? I think 15,000 is probably enough. Probably 5,000 would be enough, but 15,000 works too. And then I want the default to be 300. Okay, and then one more. Let's create an R object for the Q. So R, we're just going to call this Q at HV underscore param. Minimum value is 0, maximum value is 1 and we're going to say uh, 0 0.5 is our default. Okay, click away and connect that. So I'm not going to go through every single detail of the build process because you can find those details in videos one and two. Um, just know that we're going to need to use Heavy to build this again, use Visual Studio to build the binaries and then get those binaries into the WISE project. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and save this and then close this patch out. So main O2 is our new PD patch with exposed parameters. Main PD is the old one. I'm going to go ahead and move uh, main PD somewhere else. And then I'm going to call our new patch main. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is open up a command prompt. And then I need to navigate to where this HVCC master folder is. So the first thing I need to do is hit C colon to move to the C drive. Then I'm going to copy this path and hit CD for change directory, control V, and that takes me to the HVCC master folder. All right, so I'm going to actually this... Um, this script is old. Uh, we did that in the first video. We don't need it, so I'm going to get rid of that. I'm going to run this script that includes my parameters for name and the wise build. So I'm going to go ahead and Control-C to copy this, 
and then paste it into HVCC master. Okay, hit enter. And now we have our wise folder um, in our simple wind folder, which is what we want. All right, so next inside this WISE folder, there's a VS2015 folder, and that's where I want to change my command prompt to be pointing towards. So this should not be Unity VS2015, it should be WISE VS2015 because it's in WISE VS2015, right? So this is going to be easier if we just open up a new command prompt. So I'm going to open up a new command prompt. and then uh, change to the C drive, and then copy this script here. Okay, great. Now we're in the Wise VS 2015 folder. Now we can run this script here, or this command, I should say, and that's gonna process the HV underscore simple win Y source plugin solution for us. Okay, excellent. So now if I go back into Wise, I should have a folder here that says build, Windows X64 release, and here's all the files that I need. Okay, so now we have to get our binaries into um, the WISE plugin folder. So we can do that by opening up a File Explorer window and navigating to Program Files x86, Audio Kinetic, and we go into the WISE version that we're working with, which is 2017.2.2. We go into Authoring, x64, Release, Bin, and then the plugins folder. Now you'll see if I scroll all the way to the bottom, I have the old plugin binaries here. We don't want these, right? So we're gonna go ahead and delete them. And then we're going to choose the DLL and .xml file here, the wise source authoring plugin. Right click, copy, right click in the plugins folder, paste. Now, in order to make sure that this worked, I'm going to open up a new instance of WISE. So remember that we're working with 2017.2.2. I'm going to launch this. And I'm going to just create a new project. Okay, click close on the window that pops up. Now what you want to do is go into the Actor Mixer Hierarchy Default Work Unit, create a new sound SFX. I'm not even going to name it. I'm just going to click on it. Then here in the Contents Editor window, go to Add Source. You should see your Simple Wind plugin down at the bottom of the list, if that's what you called it. So I click on Simple Wind, and now you will see I have these parameters here. I have Q, Center Frequency, and Gain. Now this should be working. I click on the uh, sound object with the plug-in source on it, then I hit play. And we now have our Q, center frequency, and gain to play with. Of course, you also have a gain setting in the general settings in the sound property editor in WISE. So we have two gain settings here. Okay, so now we have exposed parameters in WISE for our plugin. How do we connect these? to an RTPC. Well, you can click on these little RTPC buttons next to each of these parameters if you want. So for example, for the Q, um, I can double click on it and it's going to take us to the Simple Win source editor. I could also just 
here on the simple win just double click on this and it'll bring up the simple win source editor click on the rtpc tab and i can add some rtpcs here so for our y-axis um, let's go ahead and choose i don't know let's go ahead and choose our center frequency and for the x-axis we don't have any game parameters so we'll create a new one let's call this wind strength for example, if I was putting this into a game. Okay, so uh, the frequency, the center frequency parameter and the Y axis goes all the way up to 15,000 Hertz and wind strength default is zero to 100, that's perfectly fine. So as wind strength increases, uh, then the center frequency is going to move up as well. We could also right click on the line and make this a nonlinear relationship if we want to. Okay, so wind strength increases, Q increases as, as well. In fact, we don't have to do this um, completely. Uh, we can we we don't have to go all the way up to fifteen thousand. We can say go up to five thousand. That should probably be just fine. All right, let's go ahead and add another one. Let's add our Q, and as uh, we are going to tie wind strength to Q as well. So as um, wind strength increases up to 100, we're going to open up the Q and we're going to give it a nonlinear curve. Okay. So wind strength, by the way, the default value is going to be 50. And we can go ahead and test this. So uh, we could also attach the gain to this. Let's go ahead and do that. So gain and we'll add wind strength. As wind strength increases, we're going to start it at, say, 0.1, and we're going to go all the way up to 0.5 and change the curve. Okay, so let's go ahead and test this out. Let's hit play on the transport controls. And then we're going to manipulate wind strength here. Okay, so apologies, I messed up um, on the Q parameter. What we actually want to do is at zero wind strength, we want it to be at one on the Q. We want the Q to be higher, closer towards the one end, and then actually uh, move towards zero as wind strength increases. So let's go ahead and hit play to test out our wind plugin. All right, that's it for this video on how to expose parameters within your PD patches to your WISE plugins. I hope you learned something and got something great out of this video. Uh, thanks for watching and good luck.